run it as single digits, it's so much easier. All right, now, what I want you, you should have 10 numbers on your calculator. Do you have 10 numbers there? Did you just do zero, zero comma nine on the old version? Yes, zero comma nine comma ten. Comma ten. Yeah. Yes. What did you say? Mine worked if I didn't have ten. I said zero comma nine. Yeah. Just use zero comma nine. All right. Go back to. Yeah. Two. Gotta go to math. Eight. And then do zero comma nine. Zero comma nine. Okay. So for you, do zero comma nine. So what I did like. There they are. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't have the updated calculator, I would highly suggest that it's a one quick download. I'll be happy to send it to you. You have it? You need to update your calculator because when you get to second semester and you start doing inference, you need an updated calculator. You need it updated, so it, it takes maybe three minutes to update your calculator and get that new operating system. So I would make sure that I did that. All right, so what you're going to do now is everybody got ten numbers? All right, so underneath, you're going to write your exact numbers that you got on your calculator. So for me, I got six, five... Nine, seven, three, two, eight, one, four, zero. And on top here, I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is my original list here on top. Now, how many matches did I get? Zero. I got zero percent. All right, so I'm out here putting zero. Your task is to run this simulation 20 times and see how many matches you actually get if you are doing this randomly. How many matches in any given set of give back the envelopes matches do you get? So you're going to do the same thing 20 times and see how many matches you get within any given 10. Yes, ma'am. Okay, in this calculator, see so mine, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you would just like to start over and then just use like, okay. So I said, watch your lower number. So for you, you just put your zero in that way, okay? And let's, now again, we're looking for what would be a reasonable, are we okay? What would be a reasonable amount that you would get I don't normally get much over one or two. And so what would it actually take Running these simulations, what would convince you that this is what's happening in random numbers? Just got a two. 
It's safe for a good while. You don't really want it to go all the way down. If you've got any presets in there, you'll lose it if it goes all the way down. Not in brain you have to like, say, I don't want to bring a bucket she may have put her graphing ones out, but there might be some more graphing. There's no graphing. I'm just going to get a graphing right here. So, you know, you guys were giving me some high numbers a while ago for what you thought it would take for you to say your friend had ESP. Here's why okay. So if I don't give it on the back, it's only okay. I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go to the back. So really, that's all I'm doing. So I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go to the back. The first set, yes, because I would need to give it back to the first guy who gave it to me. Now, in general, on the AP test, as far as simulations go, yes, 
they will they will ask you to do a simulation, but they're generally going to give you um, good guidelines for how to set it up. Um, these are tough to grade, as I've graded before. Um, these are really hard to grade, uh, just like it's tough to grade linear regression. If you've got to graph the line, there are certain types of problems that are just tough. And so there's not a lot of times where they will physically ask you to create the table itself. Generally, they're going to ask you questions about a set of data. Now, we've got a question in our multiple choice that we're going to look at in just a minute where they ask you to run a simulation and to pick out which would be a probable answer, a probable solution. Now, this particular task, um, I actually, um, this is one I give to my students to do. Um, and they have to do a full write-up by themselves. So, if you're talking about the AP test, and this was an investigative task or a free response question, you would not necessarily just have to do the trials, but you would have to do a little write-up with it to explain what's going on here. So, my friend claimed... He has ESP, he will attempt to prove this by what we talked about. So, my component of the simulation is handing back one envelope. Remember, I talked about the parts of an experiment. One of those is, what's the component? What is it you're testing here? It's the handing back of the envelope. I'm going to let my random digits 0 to 9 represent the envelopes from the 10 volunteers. One trial consists of a sequence of random digits with no repeats, which will be present, uh, which will represent the shuffled envelopes. It is important that you learn how to write this, that you know how to write up a simulation, because you may have to do that in the free response. So you do need to know the components of an experiment and how to set up a simulation there. But in general, uh, so according to the simulation, my simulation is here, it would not be unusual to see three correct matches simply due to chance. Now, I had one three here. I didn't get any more, just the one. So by chance, I could get three correct. So I went back to him and said, so my friend would have to do better than that, say five or six matches, before I would begin to seriously consider the possibility that he had ESP. So again, you can't run the experiment physically on the AP test. So you've got to run the simulation to mock or to emulate what you would set up there. So questions about that? Just, just, again, you will have to define the variables if it's in free response. What's the component? How are, this is uh, random digits 0 to 9. What are they going to represent? All those kinds of things have to be there. Now again, if it's a <coughs> multiple choice, they're going to define all of that for you. So you'll already know what all that's going to be. And you will just have to run the simulation. And they'll generally give you a set of random numbers there in front of you to run it on. So you won't have to worry about setting anything up. But you never know what's going to show up in first response. And we haven't had one of these in a while, so could get a simulation. All right, so let's answer a couple of questions here. Then uh, multiple choice ones first on um, experimental design. All right, these are in your pack, so find your first question there. It says, a human resource director of a large company is interested in how often employees use their computers during breaks. She watches a selected group of employees at their desk during the break times. This study would best be described as. All right. See? Why do you think it's C? I always wonder why. They're observing them not experience. Yes, it is C. Questions, are we okay with that? All right. Read two. It's kind of lengthy, so I'll let you read it and see what you think our answer is going to be. <coughs>
one thing you do kind of need to get used to is the multiple choice questions are long, very long. Sometimes you get lost in the reading. So, you know, just picking out what's important in here. All right, have we got a thought? So why do you say D in the back? I didn't hear. So why do you think it's D? Well, I didn't say D the first time, but because um, the, uh, the temperature of the water could affect the color of the shirt. Yes, and so... It's a confounding. Term. Right. Confounding is an important word that we need to know. So make sure you understand what confounding is. You know, you can't really determine if it's one or the other. All right. Look at three and see what you think about number three. All right, have we got some thoughts? B. B. Anybody else? E. E. Anybody else? So why do you think it's B? So why do you think it's E? Because uh, <coughs> I, I was just thinking because they, they, they like stratify it by making it between schools and Fort Worth. Uh, but it's all Yeah. Well, neither one of them are correct. So somebody else got a thought. Does it seem mm -hmm. no. Okay, it might be D because it's just in Fort Worth. So what's some of the other people put? I said C. Who said that? Okay, so why do you think it's C? Um, because they choose kids from each school and they choose the same amount, so they get the same one. So it's a stratified sample, and it's simple. I don't know, I just don't think. <laughs> stratified initially is not a simple random sample. Mm -hmm. I mean, you stratify and then you do a simple random sample once you <coughs> stratify. So that kind of knocks C out of the ballpark there. What about A? Alright, so what do you think about A? Um, I said A just because it said it would be randomly selected and that's a simple observation. So, I mean. <laughs> What's the right answer? The answer here is D. 
And I need a little explanation from you folks as to why. What do you think? I, I got a hand over here. What's your name? Mary Kate. You got your card backwards. I can't see it. All right, Mary Kate, what do you think? Because it's not, all the groups can't be picked because it's they have to pick three from each school. So it can't be all possible groups. <coughs> Right, so think about this. So the reason they're doing steroids, just say, is because the football team's all doing steroids. So think about that. And so none of the football team might even be included in this. You might get all the tennis people who do what? So again, the key to this one is no, because not all possible groups of 60 of the 60 athletes you're looking at could be in the sample. So that's the problem with this. It's not every individual group. Now I go back to um, I don't know your name back there. I think a stratified sample would be the best way to do this. But by definition, a stratified sample is not a simple random sample. Okay? But I do think if you truly wanted to do this correctly, <coughs> you would want to do a stratified. Now you're going to see that on the AP test. They're going to try to confuse you to make sure you realize that um, a stratified sample is not a simple random sample. You do a simple random sample in it, but it is not stratified. <clears throat> All right, um, let's look at four. Which of the following sample designs does not contain a source of bias? So if we're looking for one that does not have bias in it. Very good, very good. All right, now here's the one with the simulation in it. So it says a college counselor would like to select a simple random sample of all the 525 students in the college. She uses the numbers from, now this is what I was talking about a while ago, uh, and you'll probably get into this more as you do your simulations. If you could do a single digit simulation, that's always the easiest. But if you're talking about 525, that's three digits. So you will have to do a three-digit simulation here. So she chooses the numbers from 001 to 525 to number the students in the college database and then uses a random number table to choose her sample of 30. What numbers correspond to the first five students chosen. So you're going by digits of three here. <coughs> this is the kind of thing you would generally see in um, the multiple choice part of this for simulations. <coughs> Yes, it is D. Very good. Very good. All right. Now, on six here, um, they are asking us what kind of design of the experiment do we see here? So, is it completely randomized with one factor, gender? Is it a randomized block? Blocked by gender? Is it a randomized block? Blocked by drugs? So read the scenario there <coughs> and see what you think. Is it blocked or is it completely random?
Have we got a thought? See? Okay, so randomized block blocked by drug and gender. Anybody else got anything? The answer is D here. Now let's read this. It says 20 men, the right one, yeah, 20 men and 20 women with migraine headaches were subject in an experiment to determine the effectiveness of a new pain medication. 10 of the 20 men and 10 of the 20 women have chosen at random to receive the new drug. The remaining 10 men and 10 women received a placebo. Now, you can only block on one thing at a time. So what is the first thing that you are blocking on here? Gender. So it's not the drugs. If it were the drugs, then you would be splitting them into groups initially based on the drugs, but you are splitting them initially into <coughs> these categories of men and women. If it weren't blocked by drugs, wouldn't they all get the same drug? You've got to know what the word block means. Wouldn't you go males? Well, males, the drugs males, are the... Zero. Have y'all gone over the parts of the experiment yet? Yeah, I think the so. unit. I use experimental units, Okay, so... The treatments in this experiment are the drugs. So you're you blocked. Do what? And you don't block treatment? No, you block by something that you think is going to have an effect on the outcome. And so obviously these people thought this migraine medicine was going to affect men and women differently. <coughs> That's what you block on. You're not blocking on the drugs because you're applying the same treatments to both groups. So that's not a block. Again, those are your treatments in the experiment. But you only block. And the last time we had to do one on the AP test in the writing part, you had to block. You had to set up a block in there. So again, you've got to look at the question and say, but now it was pretty flexible it allowed you to block, some people thought, and I don't remember what it was about, but it was something about drugs. And some people thought you needed to block on age because they thought that younger people would react differently from older people, so they blocked by age. Other people thought you needed to block by males and females. So you can block on more than one thing in any given experiment, but in the experiment, once you start, there's only one block. There's only one in the experiment. You're not going to have two. It's your treatments that you are setting up differently there. So make sure you know that. All right. Um, seven. Read this and see what you think. We've got about five minutes left here before we've got breakfast. So what do you think here? Okay. Yes, it is a stratified random sample. Yes. Is a systematic random sample an actual Yes. Systematic would be like um, you wanted to pull a sample from um, the Decatur High School student body, and you said, okay, I'm going to draw, there's a thousand of you here, so I'm going to draw a number out of the hat, and so I'm saying draw number six. <laughs> so I'm going to start with, if they're alphabetical, I'm going to start with person number six, and then I'm going to take every sixth one. There's a systematic approach to the way that you pull. Yes. You will, that happens quite a bit, actually. So you do need to know what that is. All right. Um, eight.
All right, so what do you think? Three factors, 12 levels, 420 treatments. What? No. Oh, three factors, seven levels, 420. Anybody else got a thought on this one? E is correct. You've got three factors here that you're interested in. Yes. <coughs> All right, go get your biscuit.